Hi everyone, uh, my name is Allison Benton. I am the uh, Vespers coordinator, and I'm sure if you're hopping on this video, you already know that. Um, but I just wanted to uh, introduce myself and let you know a little bit about our uh, Vespers experience on Wednesday nights. Um, it is a contemporary service that we ha have at First Baptist of Bloomington. Um, and we really created the service to try and get people connected that may not be connected uh, to our church already. And also to, um, to have some discussions and um, have a place where we can uh, basically become a, a closer community um, on a different day of the week. Now we also have logos on Wednesday nights. So uh, it is also a space where we invite parents or participants of logos um, to come and be involved in that service. So uh, thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'm very excited for uh, tonight's Vesper service online. And I'd like to invite you guys to uh, greet one another if you are joining us live in the uh, live group chat. And also to um, to answer our discussion question. Uh, today, our discussion question is, what was the best gift you got for Christmas? So I'll invite you to answer that question uh, down below in the live chat. And um, thank you guys so much for joining us once again. Let's, uh, let's worship together.
you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will take, I will talk to the Father and he will provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the spirit of truth. The godless world can't take him in because it doesn't have eyes to see him, doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already because he's, he has been staying with you and will even be in you. I will not leave you or orphan him. I'm coming back in just a little while. The world will not longer see me, but you're going to see me because I am living in your about to wait. You're about to come live at that moment. You will know absolutely that I'm in my father and you're in me and I'm in you. You forgot it. The person who knows my comments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and make myself plain to him. A disciple said, Master, why is it that you are about to make yourself plain to us but not to the world? Because I love this word, said Jesus, it is sightless. Word, if anyone loves me, he will carefully keep my word, and my father will love him. Well, move right into the neighborhood. Not loving me means not keeping my words. The message you are hearing is not mine. It's the message of the Father who sent me. I'm telling you these things while I'm still living with you. The friend of Holy Spirit whom the Father, the Father will send at my request will make everything plain, plain to you, he will remind you of all the things I have told you. I'm leaving you well and whole. That's my parting gift to you. Peace. I don't leave you the way you used to be being left feeling abandoned. So don't be upset. Don't be distraught. You heard me tell you, I'm going away, and I'm coming back. If you love me, you, you would be glad that I am on my way to the Father, because the Father is the goal and purpose of my life. Jesus. 
Would you pray with me? Lord, thank you so much for this day and this time that you've given us uh, to be together, whether we're in person with our family or uh, gathering online to uh, worship together in a different platform than we usually do. Lord, we just thank you for uh, this great experience that we can have at this day and age. I also just pray for um, all of us that we will continue to uh, live with you in our hearts, continue to express our gratitude to you and uh, thankfulness for all that you've done for us uh, throughout this time together. God, you truly are our, our great comforter and refuge. And I pray that we all recognize that and come together in uh, grace with each other and with ourselves. Lord, you are so good. Would you bless us this day and help us to bless others with your love. In your name, amen. Hello everyone, I'm Michelle and I'm gonna to be tonight's Vespers devotional speaker. I'd like to speak to you about traditions. Now by definition in the dictionary, a tradition is the passing on of customs or beliefs from generation to generation or I'd like to think from person to person. Now, whenever I think traditions, I always hear Tevia from the music Fiddler on the Roof saying traditions in my head. In the prologue song, 
entitled traditions, he describes traditions as follows. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, how to work, even how to wear clothes. He later says, because of our traditions, everyone knows who he is and what God expects him to do. There are many traditions and many things that we pass on and share with one another. But the important thing is, is that we need to share why we pass on these traditions. Why do we need to keep doing them? Now, if I were to call someone an Ebenezer, what would you think of that person? Now, some might be familiar with the fictional story A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. In it, the lead character Ebenezer Scrooge is um, described as this. A tight-fisted hand of the grindstone, Scrooge is squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Well, that leads to our scripture for the day. 1 Samuel chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. When the Philistines heard that Israel had assembled at Mitzvah, the rulers of the Philistines came up to attack them. When the Israelites heard of it, they were afraid because of the Philistines. They said to Samuel, Do not stop crying out to the Lord our God for us, that he may rescue us from the hand of the Philistines. Then Samuel took a suckling lamb and sacrificed it as a whole, or as a whole burnt offering to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord on Israel's behalf, and the Lord answered him. While Samuel was sacrificing the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to engage in Israel in battle. But the day the Lord, but that day the Lord thundered with a loud thunder against the Philistines and threw, to, threw them into such a panic that they were rooted before the Israelites. The men of Israel rushed out of Mitzvah and pursued the Philistines, slaughtering them along the way to the point below Bethkar. Then Samuel took a stone and set it up between Mitzvah and Shen. He named it Ebenezer saying, thus far, the Lord has helped us. In Hebrew, Ebenezer means stone of help. Now, to go back to A Christmas Carol, there are a lot of theories of why Charles Dickens decided to name his fictional character Ebenezer Scrooge, but some people believe it may have been foreshadowing that people had forgotten that Ebenezer means stone of help. In the story, Scrooge did not necessarily deserve a second chance but the point of why he needed a second chance was that he had the greatest capacity to help others. That if his heart changed, he could really, really help out his community. Now, let's go back to Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> so some of you who may know the musical will go, but Michelle, Tevia's traditions change. Yes. The musical Fiddler on the Roof is about a Jewish father, Tevia, who attempts to maintain his Jewish, and, or his Jewish religious and cultural traditions while outside forces encroach on his family's lives, including Imperial Russia evicting the Jewish families from their homes. Now, I do love this depiction of faith in this musical because as his tradition, as his world is changing around him, Tevia is always talking to God. And of course, God's always there. Even when our lives change, even when our traditions change, God's always there for us. God is our constant. Even in today's scripture, we can see traditions changing. The Israelites call out to Samuel, their prophet, saying, please cry out to the Lord on our behalf. And then Samuel does a sacrifice. He sacrifices a lamb to God. Well, I've never sacrificed a lamb to God as the tradition changed and my sacrificial lamb was, is Jesus Christ. So as we go into the new year, why I wanted to talk or why I wanted to share about traditions is so we can think about the different traditions that we hold true in our lives or the different traditions that mean something to us so that we can make sure that we share that with one another and share why we do that tradition. But at the same time, also understand that our traditions will also change and God knows that, and God will walk with us or walk beside us as traditions change and help us to know what to hold true and what to change. And that's okay too. So as we reflect in the next couple of minutes, feel free to share any traditions that you may have that mean something to you, either in the live chat or in the comments below or with the people that you're watching with. And also please think about the traditions that you may share with somebody in this upcoming year. May you see the blessing of God's plan in this new year. Amen.
Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second commandment is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these.